Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Technically Something, the show where we talk about technology, creativity, tutorials, and gaming. I'm your host, Kevin Allen, and today we're continuing our Intro to Photoshop series with Hoax Photography, which is basically having one photograph and inserting something else that doesn't belong there. It's gonna be pretty easy, so let's get right to it. Tell me more. What the? Well, um, turns out I have a clone. I had to dispatch him. Very sad. Okay, um, so in the hoax photos, what, what you can do for any of this stuff, there's a whole number of things. I mean, if you just do a search, I'm kind of scared to search, but let's look at hoax photos or hoax photos. There we go, at H. Okay, so if we look at hoax photos, you'll get a number of things. Um, one of the classics for earliest hoax photos in history is this one, where they used a lot of overlaying, um, masking, and photo techniques to make it look as if this girl had found fairies. Um, there are several, several other ones like this, or um, I know that there's one of the giant... Oh yeah, classic. People taking pictures of their giant pets. Um, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, you generally get the idea. Uh, so what I decided to do was take this picture of a city skyline and I wanted to make it look like some giant ship was hovering in the sky kind of like um, the Avengers ship or maybe like an alien ship or just some high-tech spaceship so I found this image and while I know that this one is technically um, I think it was actually painted in Photoshop or some other program like that I think we can still use it and make this work so today what I wanted to teach you is a technique for making very sharp, um, exact selections. It does take a little bit more time to do, but in the end, it really does help make it look a lot better. Um, what we're gonna use is the pen tool. You can hit P on your keyboard to access that. When you do, you'll get this icon, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I, I don't necessarily need all of these jets and that, that yellow, sort of fiery look coming out of it but I'm going to click and you'll see that point up here and I can go to the next point where I want to make a selection or a line and click again and now we've made a line and I just continue making these points as I go along the ship since there's a lot of straight edges it's nice so far but if we run into a curve like this this is where the pen tool is really helpful. So I'm going to click a little bit further ahead and hold down the mouse. I'm gonna click and hold, and then drag. As I do, it'll create a curve. It's kind of like pulling outward to create that curve. Once you have it to a spot where you like, just let go. And now, unfortunately, if I were to click again, I won't get a straight line. I'm gonna get, it's gonna curve back to that next point. So how do we get rid of that? Well, what you're going to do is hold Alt, hover over the last point that you made, and click it again. You'll see that that other handle disappears, and that makes the last curve, that issue that we had, go away. So now I can add another curve, and I'm going to hide X curve from occurring. And since I don't necessarily need to cut out everything, I'm just going to continue up here. Sort of make my own selection. And one uh, pro tip, when you're cutting things out, try, it's, it's good to be as close to the edge as possible, but while you're cutting, try and stay just a little bit on the inside, just a few pixels or a hair on the inside. 
That way you're not gonna get any of that background or the sky popping out of your cutout and it'll look a little bit sharper. And as you can see, I'm, I'm going along and I'm not worrying about all these antennas and rods and stuff that are hanging down because A, I'm sure you value your time and I don't want to keep you here forever as I take care of all of those details. Um, but <clears throat> B, if you want to take all the time to select all that stuff, you absolutely can. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just on a bit of a time constraint and I want to show you how all this works and this is just one step. Okay, so we zoom all the way out, control zero, see all these points and it looks ugly. Good job! Ah! To make it into a selection, we're going to click on paths. By default, it should be right next to layers. However, if you don't see it, and this goes for anything on your screen, you can always go to window, then select whatever is not showing. So right now, even though I have paths on my window, the moment I check it, go up. Um, so on work path, it's very small, but this is showing the path that we just created. If I hold control and click it, it turns all of that path work that we just did into a selection. Now we can go back to our layer and if you watch the previous video, you know exactly what comes next. We hit the add layer mask. We have a really nice sharp cutout of our spaceship. So now we have our ship, but it doesn't necessarily look like it belongs in the photo. It's It kind of pops out, it stands out. Um, so we have to use adjustment layers to make sure that it kind of blends in a little bit better. So the first adjustment I'm going to use will be solid color. <clears throat> And right now, it's whatever color we select. I know the sky is blue, and that's kind of what I'm going for, so I'm going to select a blue, then change the blending mode, overlay. But again, that adjustment layer, since we haven't told it exactly what to do, is applying to all of our layers. So I have to hold Alt, hover in between those layers, click. Now it's just applying to my ship, but that's not the right blue. The sky looks different, so we're going to double click back on our color, and this will bring up the color picker. And as we hover outside this box, you can try and match it just by going along and see the changes in real time, or you can go outside the box and then suddenly your mouse turns into the eyedropper tool, so you can click the sky itself and sample colors that are actually in the photo. And I, I see this going one of two ways. We could either make it go blue or be right in the middle, but I think it looks the best if we get some of these sandier, sort of yellowy color. All right, so we're getting a little bit closer in terms of color, but <clears throat> there's still a couple things that are off. It, like down here, if we look at our photo, some of the shadows may look a little bit darker. So we can add one more adjustment layer called the curves. And this is under brightness, contrast, levels, exposure, all of this stuff affects brightness and also darkness. So curves, you'll notice on the side here, it goes from light to dark, light to dark. So wherever I drag this point, it's going to affect those values. But again, it's affecting the whole picture. So I hold Alt, hover between, and click. Now. All the changes I make will only apply to the ship. All right, so now we have a few adjustments there. And this is just a general purpose thing, but next time you look off into the distance, if you can see a tall building or a tower, or something like that, that goes well above the horizon, then you'll see that it, it gets almost, it's misty. It's almost washed out, and that's because of the atmosphere. So to show the scale of our ship, what I'm gonna do is just drop, whoa, I'm just going to drop the opacity slightly. So the last thing that we're going to do is get our brush, and, and this is this is something I'm doing specifically for this picture. It's still a cool technique. <clears throat> um, we're going to make sure that we have a soft brush, and I'd say this size is fine. I'm going to make sure that my opacity is down to between 25 and 30 percent. Um, 
And as we go along, I'm going to sample the color from the clouds in the scene by hitting I for eyedropper. I'm going to click on the brightest part of this cloud, that color. Oh, but we got to make sure that we're on the correct layer or sample from all layers. But we click on a layer. There we go. So we get that creamier color. And now paint on brand new layer. On my clouds layer, I can freely go through and start adding this. Now, if the opacity is too low, like in this case, it's a little low for me. So I'm going to turn it up. See a difference, but I can still see through the clouds. And as you get more detailed, shrink the brush a little bit. Get some of those smaller bits, brighter bits of cloud. Don't be afraid to, do, you can probably hear me tapping the mouse. I'm just kind of tapping away and almost scribbling around. So we have the brighter part of the cloud. I'm going to get my eyedropper again, click on a dark part of the cloud, go back to my brush and increase the size a few notches with the right bracket key. Now, over in a few spots, darker parts of the cloud shrink the brush again, and maybe I'll drop the opacity since the dark is really pushing through. Oh, we can just kind of click along. Shadows. Same thing with our cloud up here. That's a cool effect there to add to the picture. Finally, um, last thing that I'm going to do, just so we don't see a bunch of these dots hanging around that looks like it was brushed in, I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, slightly increase the blur effect. And again, you can go through and edit this however you like. So if you have too much cloud, this is just a brush. Now we can go back in and erase whatever we don't want. Just right. You end up with something that's a little bit convincing. Um, this can be used for several different applications, guys. If you want to do something where it's like, I found a picture of Bigfoot, or a, as said before, giant squid on the beach, or just doing anything that inspires regular everyday world with a lot of fantasy stuff going on, this is a great way to do something within 15 minutes if you're cruising. Um, but other than that, uh, I'd like to see what you guys come up with. So. If you have Photoshop, go ahead and make some stuff and post it online. Leave some links in the comments. Let's take a look. But if you have any questions, also comment, let me know, and I will get back to you as soon as I can, maybe even make a video. In the meantime, my name's Kevin Allen. I hope that this was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell to hear more from this channel. And this was Technically Something. See you guys later.